Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be able to join you today. My name is Steve Zalewski. I am the prior CISO of Levi Strauss, and I have the honor today to be able to moderate a panel of CISO experts as we talk about what data security in the cloud is. Hi, my name is Scott Morris. I am the prior CISO for Blue Cross Blue Shield, and more recently, Zapari. Hello, my name is Eric Pataler. I'm the VP of Information Security at ACV Auctions. Hello, everyone. My name is Thomas Likas, and uh, I'm leading enterprise security architecture at uh, Takeda Pharmaceuticals. Hey, everybody. I am Curtis Simpson. I am the CISO of Armis. With that, what I'd like to say is the first question is, so define data security in the cloud as what does that mean for you? What is that definition with your cloud environment and, and what data security is? I think that with the proliferation of data across the cloud, it's very easy for people to leverage data and utilize data to enable our businesses to, to do incredible things. But with that, it has no boundaries then. And so, we need to, for me, when I first met with the Sierra team, there were sort of three things I was very interested in. So the first thing we wanted to, I really wanted to understand was the landscape of data. The second part is I also really wanted to understand what was it doing? What, who was interacting with that data? Where was it going? Where was it being stored? Where was it being transmitted? Where was it being processed? And I wanted to be able to have alerts and events related to that that did not require me to you know, configure every single distributed system out there and enable it to actually share the data, which is incredibly hard. And that is what has traditionally been one of the biggest problems, I believe, in data security. Um, and then lastly, I needed to be able to provide it to my business stakeholders, both the executive team as well as our audit committee from the board, so that we could help, help them understand how we were managing our data, how we were governing it, how we were securing it and how we were keeping it private. Thank you. Everybody says data security is important. And I think you've all given very good examples of why it is for your companies and why for the industry. But here's my question. Is it a today problem or a tomorrow problem? For me personally, data security has always been a priority. It's paramount because it ultimately enables the trusted brand at the end of the day. So when we look at security, when I look at data security, it remains a top priority. First and foremost, not only within organizations like ours, but I also want to touch on organizations like I came from that look like many of our customers going through this next iteration of digital transformation. And the reality is, is we didn't move to the cloud. We added the cloud. We added the cloud to an already complex environment. And as we're moving from legacy platforms like AS400s and mainframes to microservices in the cloud, the data is still in the mainframe. But now it's also in the hands of a developer who's building microservices, testing those microservices with a QA organization within a test environment, staging those new capabilities for the business within staging environments, and finally within production. So as we think about how our businesses are changing and how data is being proliferated as a result of those changes, it's actually become more paramount now than ever before that we have continuous visibility into where is our data and how is it exposed? Because we're incredibly busy. We're focused on a hundred different problems at once, if not a thousand. And we are continuously, any of our organizations, introducing new exposures or putting data at risk as we move very quickly through these transformations. So what we need to be able to do is it's not about slowing down. It's about being able to identify that we are about to or have introduced one of those changes in our environment that affects that outcome and potentially puts that data at risk such that we can address it before the transformation's too far down the road and we're having to renegotiate with the business what processes and technology look like such that we can affect that thing that we should have known about a long time ago. In my mind, when I was at Levi's, I saw this as actually two different types of use cases. The first one was protecting my company data. So data protection. And the second one was data privacy. Can you talk to which of those use cases is higher priority for you and give me an example or a use case of how you've had to implement that? Absolutely. So the decision for me is very easy. The consumer data is, would take priority. Now thinking about a pharma company, 
we have patients, right? Patients are our customers, they're our consumers. It's only lately that we have a direct interaction with consumers. We give them apps, we give them opportunity to interact with us, to give us feedback about, um, I don't know, side effects or how they felt after they took something specific. And obviously they, they, they place their data into our care and they trust us. Now there's a trust element again. They trust us not to misuse it, not to lose it, not to use it for anything that they, they never consent to, right? So it comes back to if I know where this data is, I can put some guardrails around that. I can define the PII, and let's say uh, data source that my company should have and where this data should be stored, and I can make sure it doesn't leave, right? Not just for my own benefit, but also for my customer's benefit. Just as a point of reference, at this point, Takeda has roughly 2.3 million records of customers stored. This is a huge, huge number, especially compared to the number of actual, let's say, uh, HTTPs we have or even users we have. So absolutely, the, the, the data that we have from our consumers or customers takes absolute priority. Otherwise, our brand reputation is lost immediately. The trust people have in us is lost immediately. There's no question there. How do you measure success of your program? for the controls that you're implementing for data security in the cloud? Um, but to me, it wasn't rocket science, right? We understand you know, what data we, under we have visibility into, how we manage that data. So uh, showing what type of permissions are there, who has access to the data, um, or what's our footprint look like and how are we reducing it? Is it growing? Uh, are we aware of new data sources coming on board, right? So this, some of these things may not sound like board level um, points or metrics to have, but I think they boil up to uh, the overall data protection. Um, and one of the favorite, my favorite things that Sierra showed us, right, which I, I, I'm ashamed to say I wasn't quite aware of was, was ghost RDSs, right? We had no idea how, how many there were in our organization. And it wasn't even a risk I was aware of, uh, quite frankly. So, you know, that was a huge one for us. And we took that metric and, and used that as a higher level one. Like this is the, these are the instances that are just ghosts. They're no longer used. They, were, they're, they had a point in time or a very brief use case. And we took that and, and rolled that up because we were able to, to address that very quickly. And, it, and the uh, absence of an exposure and the absence of a data loss is absolutely success. The problem is if you go to the board and said, hey, for the last 10 years, nothing ever happened, be happy. It, it sometimes doesn't resonate well, right? And that's maybe a problem of the human mind. If something doesn't happen, it goes out of, out of the way. We, we tend to stop thinking about it, stop worrying about it. If I have to define success at this early stage, I would have to... I would probably think more about how many integrations I've done, how many slices of data, what percentage of data I've actually mapped out in my organization, just to show that we are actually on top of things and we know where our data is. And even if it's not perfect 100%, it will probably be never 100%. But even if it's just 80 or 90% of whatever it is, it's definitely success. And then if I can tie that back to, a, let's say, a nice governance framework where I can say, we provided the means for 80, 90% of our data to be governed properly to provide proper access control, visibility, uh, I don't know, monitoring, uh, and proper sharing with whoever stakeholders, that's successful. The next question is, I'd like to talk about your data security program maturity, implemented programs like this. I consider that there were four stages. There was discovery, prevention, detection, and response. So can you speak to which one or more of those four you've implemented and why and where you consider the maturity of your program? I lose faith in brands where those brands can't protect my data, full stop, right? And so when I look at that, when I look at the world that way or that, that succinctly, I've got to make sure that our program is doing or looking things exactly at things exactly the same way. And that's what we've done. We are not going to lose data. And it's about having a continuous program in place that identifies where you could and where someone's trying to get at the data. And our focus has been on both of those things at top priority. I'd like you each to speak to the lessons learned that you had in implementing your data security program with Sierra. Think about first what you want to achieve in data security, because data security we know is a very broad uh, area. Think about what you expect from Sayura to give you and uh, what your goals actually are. And if you're talking to Sayura and you want to do a POC or something, think about where you want to get started. You probably have a very broad cloud environment with lots of data everywhere. Think about where you think most of the sensitive data is or where you would feel the, the most value would come from by applying Sayura even for a test. 
and who gives you the most uh, visibility into that data store, and then you have a much nicer use case to drive forward with the product. I don't know if it's necessarily a lesson learned, but it's just one of those things that I observed again um, in assessing Sierra, and that was quite frankly that I think if any of us assume that our CWPs or CSPM type of solutions are giving us these insights, don't assume and just move on. Assume and compare. Sierra is right? always a, a first and foremost a security tool, right? But I think for us, as we went into the POV and exited the POV, um, we're a small company, um, and we need we should have had the right people at the table first. It shouldn't have just been my team. I should have had DevOps there. I should have some DBA engineering team people there because. The, the value of this tool is so much broader than just a security team. Uh, and and I, I think that would have helped us save a few cycles and gain more support, uh, you know, pretty quickly corrected. And we're using it for our data governance program. We're using, our DevOps guys are using it. We're using it for discovery. All, it, it's a much larger scope of stuff. So with that, I think I'd like to bring it to a close. I really appreciate the time and effort you've all put into this. High quality answers, excellent team.